a warm welcome to all our participants in this, uh, uh, I don't want to call it a webinar, I want to call it a, a, a chat, defensive chat. We want to make it as interactive as possible. So very welcome to everyone from a call South Africa. Um, just some general ground rules. Um, during the presentation from Rian, I'm going to ask everyone to just uh, you know, keep your videos off. Uh, the Wi-Fi is not always very um, uh, uh, trustworthy in South Africa at times. So let's keep the video off and your audio off as well. Uh, during this presentation, you can, in the chat option on Zoom, you'll see in the bottom right, there's a raise your hand option. You can just raise your hand and I'll uh, unmute you and then you're going to ask your question directly to, to Rian. Uh, Rian asked as well last night when we spoke. He wants to keep it interactive, so he wants lots of questions from you guys, um, so we can make we can learn from each other basically. Um, so yeah, in saying that, uh, warm welcome to Rian as well. Rian, thank you for making time. Thanks, Thanks Marcus. Marcus. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you for the opportunity. opportunity. <laughs> Wonderful, Rian. Let's start off. If you can give a little bit of background to all the guys uh, that don't know you. Where did you start? How did you get into the defensive mindset? Um, yeah, just give us a little bit of background. Hey, hey, I, 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 I'm originally, originally from Kuruman in, in, in the good old Kalori. Played the group up there, played rugby and so on. But um, I've, I've been, been across, across the world with rugby and, uh, you know, the last, last couple of years, uh, making it into the professional world, still looking for that big break. But, but trying, trying to, um, you know, build a brand as a defensive coach. coach. Um, I, think I think one of the reasons why I like defense is I know coaches say, you know, um, guts, guts cannot, cannot be coached. And uh, uh, it's true, guts, guts cannot be coached. But, but I think guts can, can be grown in a defensive, defensive system. Because uh, a big hit inspires a guy next year. And that, for me, um, inspires me. And that's why I'm so, so fond of defense. I enjoy it. There's a lot of analysis to do. There's a lot of thinking. And defense is all about um, outsmarting the attack. For attack coaches, Nas, you're an attack guru. You, you, you guys want to outsmart the defense. Now, for me, I want to outsmart the attack. So, yeah, defense is my passion. I enjoy it a lot. Wonderful. And then, Rian, um, so today's topic we, we discussed um, was the one three three one defensive shot. So... What I want to begin this chat with is, is this little seed was planted in your head by our current Springbok coach job, Nina Albert, in a, in a Bloemfontein pre-World Cup camp, if I've got it correct. So just take us through that chat, that little seed that was planted in your head and, and how that developed into this idea of a 1-3-3-1 of a defensive shape. Yeah, yeah well, look, I've, 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 I've heard, heard of this, this show before, before and I've, I've, I've tried, tried to find, uh, you know, footage and did some research on it, but couldn't really find something to go on. And then when the box had a uh, World Cup champion in Bloemfontein, um, uh, there was one of these open practices, and I was with the Shimlers this year in the Boston Cup, and I was... Um, uh, there, yeah, I had the chance to uh, look, look at some of their drills and stuff, and Jock discussed some, some of these things, things with us, and, and from there, it's, it's stuck with me. And, and from there, I've gone, you know, back into the rugby world, I've looked at the teams who actually does it. It's quite, uh, for me, it's quite easy to pick up when a team does it, and then obviously, we're going to discuss a little bit later, obviously, that's how the box defended in the World Cup, and they... You know, you know they, they, they almost, almost perfected, perfected the system. system. Uh, we're we're going to chat about, about that final against England, but that, you know, and the final against England, England they ran this one three three one system, system and it completely suffocated, suffocated England. England. And, and I think it's the way forward for defense because it's, it's all about balance. balance. Um, there's, there's a couple, couple of things that we're going to discuss now, and, and uh, I, I think, think there's, there's no way of getting around, around it. it. If you're attacking against a one three three one system, a balanced setup, a solid setup. It's, it's going to be difficult to get through them. Yes, and I think I think from a uh, attack point of view, as a tech coach, <coughs> this could get you excited as well because if you if you are already in a shape defensive wise and you get the ball back from a transi transition or whatever the case may be, and you can immediately have that one percent advantage, knowing that you're already basically in a shape, that can give you that little edge in the game. Is it not true? 
Yes, yes, look, that's, that's the, the most, most obvious, I mean, that's, that's the most obvious, obvious reason for the 131 defense, defense shape. The minute you have a turnover, you are you're in, in attack, attack shape, you, you can start playing. There's, there's no need to, to run, run the ball two phases, make a heat up just so that your pots can get into place, your backs can get out wide. If you're in a 131 defense shape, the minute you get a turnover, everybody's in position and you can play. You can get it up short, you can play wide, you can do whatever. So that's that's the most obvious reason, but if you look between the lines, then there's some Great stuff. We look forward to your presentation. So Rian, I'm gonna make you the host now and then you can screen share and you can yeah, you can you can have your chat and uh, like I said I'll I'll watch the questions and uh, if there's any questions I'll just unmute that person and he can ask that question then directly to you. All right, so thanks, thanks Mars. Mars. Look, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very passionate, passionate about defense, defense. and once, once I get going, going, I can keep us busy for a week. So, so um, if, if there's, there's a question, question and you say, don't stop, wait at me or something. Okay. Um, but, but just three things uh, before we start. So on, on, on the sideline, side because I have such a passion for coaching, and I have a passion for um, improvement. The reason why I'm in coaching uh, is improvement. It's seeing, you know, seeing a team that's meant to end in the bottom of the lock, but then they end in the top five of the lock, whether that be first or fifth, but then the top five, um, and it's about their potential. For me, that's why I'm in coaching. So it's all about improvement and enhancing other coaches. So when I work with coaches, uh, uh, I run a program on the side from Rugby Coaching 101. Uh, it's a coaching the coach program where there's units which uh, kind of empowers coaches into the way of doing things. Now, what I want to get to is the concept I always base my things on is that all, you know, give a man a fish and you feed him for a day, but teach him how to fish and you feed him for a lifetime. So with that being said, I know there's coaches from all over the world and there's guys that's been involved at a high level, so I'm not, I don't want to tell you how to do it. We're really just going to discuss this one, three, three, one, um, the framework, and I'll show you what's a couple of, you know, ground rules that, that it's inevitable that you do it when you do one, three, three, one thing. And hopefully it plants a seed, hopefully you can go from here and, you know, apply it and figure things out and develop it furthermore, maybe in a couple of months from now we'll chat again and you'll have a way better idea of it than I do. But um, just three things uh, when we go into the chat. The first thing is um, on defense, it's first things first. And uh, it's not rocket science, but players must tackle. You know, shape or system doesn't tackle for you. So the one three three one shape is not going to make your tackles. It's really just a formation. I saw that this season again with some white teams that I coach. And then the second thing is, and this is why I'm, I'm in defense, and this is something uh, that I feel you need to understand uh, if you want to be running the one three three one uh, defensive shape, because it's a it's a very in your face shape. Um, you need to be in a attacking mindset, uh, positive thinking, and you need to see your defense. So you need to see defense as a weapon. And for me, I always say the way that you think about defense determines your attitude on defense. So back in the days, uh, we would say uh, attack is the part of the game where you win with the ball in hand. And defense is the part of the game where you stop the opponents. But it doesn't work like that anymore. I don't think it works like that anymore. For me, defense is the part of the game which you win without the ball in that. All right, so it's all about positive thinking. So there's a good old joke. I know Frankie Smith loves it, um, where they say, uh, this, you know, this rugby team rocks up at practice and one of their big strong fellas, that when they get to the huddle and the coach is talking about what they're going to do for the day, he has a bra on over his jersey and everybody's looking at him and saying, John, since when do you wear a bra? And he looks up and says, since my wife found it in my car. Okay, so that's, um, that's a good example of positive thinking. And that's how you need to see defense. Uh, defense is a negative coaching. It's not negative thinking. Defending can be attacking. All right, so let's, let's, um, let's keep that in mind. And if you understand that, then we can get to the, the manipulation ability of a defensive system. Because then you can start defending in a certain way uh, where you manipulate the attack into doing things. So I call it, you are, uh, I say we are attacking the attack. Now I'm gonna get to that. So first things first, uh, the one three three one shape um, is basic. It, it is what it sounds like. Uh, we have Lucy's, you know, Lucy uh, out on the right, Lucy, two Lucy's out on the left. And then we have the tights in the middle. So I'm just going to um, try and share here. Mm, 
open this up and see if I can share it for you. Okay, sorry guys, I got, I've, in the past 60 days, I think I've attended more webinars than I've ever done in my entire life, but I didn't know it when I was just attending. Um, so here's the 1331 shape, it's basic, it's exactly like you expected it, all right? It's not rocket science, it's the same as the attack shape, so you've got a loose out white to the left, I've colored the looses uh, in yellow for you. There's the number six is out wide, then there's a uh, pot of three, and then on the other side of the rock, there's um, another pot of three, which is the two tights and the Lucy, so there's a two plus one, and that makes a three, and then, of course, there's a seven out wide, that's your other Lucy, and then in the one three three one shape, your center is split, so there's a center on either side, and then there's the outside back, who's the wing, your nine, uh, we're going to get to that, this loosens up your nine, he can do absolutely anything, you can give him a roll, you don't have to give him a roll, um, he's very flexible in the system, and then you'll see at the back uh, is the 15, I have the 10 there, you can decide who you want to put in there, I'll tell you why I have the 10 there, 10 is one of the decision makers, so if there's a turnover, then he's obviously going to come forward, but from where he's standing in the back, he has, he's going to have a, a, a way better vision or a picture of where the space is. And then when he runs forward, because he's going to get the ball in depth, he's going to have more time to make a decision, and by then everybody would, be, uh, would have dropped back um, to do some playing. Uh, all right, so I'm just going to go to the next one. Uh, Nos, can, can you see this one? Yes, yeah, perfect. Now you find out, Rian, okay. you can so go ahead. So, okay, all right, so um, when I work through these things, for me, it's always so what, why, and how. Uh, so what was the shape? So why? Why run a one three three one uh, defensive shape? Now, the first thing is obvious. Uh, I've said it already. If there's a turnover, you are immediately in position. And I got to tell you, I've tried this with a primary school team. Um, I'm, I'm blessed to be involved at all levels. And I've seen a primary school team, you know, uh, on a very basic level, but I've just seen the effect of it. The minute the ball is turned over, you have the right personnel and the right channel. So... Um, obviously, the one three three one shape. If there's a turnover, you are in, uh, in shape. Your attack shape. Uh, the second thing is um, interesting enough. Uh, there's more turnovers that occurs in the game uh, in the wider channels. And I don't have the stats to show show you, but you can have a look in the games. The turnovers often occur in the wider channels, and and it's also not rocket science because the wider channels. I call it the quicker channels. And there's more space, and Oaks are taking each other on. Uh, that's where you play spaces, not faces. You're not necessarily gonna gonna bash it up. You're gonna try and beat the guy. And because you you're running into space in different lines, um, and it's quicker channels, support is often slower there. And teams target the outside channels, you know, to poach the ball and to counter up. So. Um, because more turnovers occur in the, uh, um, in the wider channels, in a 1-3-3-1 one, three, three, one shape, you are set up already naturally in the shape to attack those wide rocks. Right, and then the third thing, um, why a one thirty three one defense shape is because of what's on the screen now. So this is very basic, but if you take power, mobility, and speed uh, of a player, then if we can make up a profile, it should look something like this. So your tights are your big, strong guys, and they're a little bit slower. Your loses is like, I call them like trans transition defenders. And then obviously they on the right hand side, that blue arrow, that'll be uh, more or less the profile of your back. So they're quicker, they can cover more ground. Okay. Now, um, on a rugby field, the heavy traffic is mostly in the middle. Um, and the quicker traffic is out wide. So now, in the middle, we want our bigger defenders because um, that's where we want power. We're going to have smaller spacing there. They don't need to be that fast there because that's where the heavy traffic comes. They come straight on front on. Then as we move wider, the traffic becomes quicker. So that's where we want our quicker defenders. So uh, again, we just want balance. And this balance is given to you by stagging your defenders in a 1-3-3-1 one, three, three, one, uh, formation. Now it also sells a powerful picture. And remember, defense is all about the picture that you sell because the attack plays what they see. So when the attackers look up, you know, when the outside backs look up and they see, because uh, we teach our backs to look for mismatches, 
you want them to run on the tight forwards. But now, if you stagger in this 1-3-3-1 formation, you shouldn't have a tight forward that's defending in the outside channel. You'll have, at most, you'll have a Lucy there, and he should be quick enough and mobile enough to cover that space. So uh, there's less chance of mismatches. Um, and that's also the, the next reason I wanted to discuss it. Uh, the 1 shape minimizes the risk um, of mismatches in the wide channels. Um, because you'll have enough speed in the wider channels. If you always have a Lucy there, uh, there will be a Lucy between your tights and your outside backs defending. So again, I mentioned it earlier, your Lucy becomes like a transition defender. I almost want to say he's, he's quick enough to defend to the backs and he's slow enough to defend to the tights. So he's like the, the in the middle guy and he connects the line. We're going to look at a video clip um, where there's a good example where there's no connection. Um, then the next thing is, and this is, this is quite important, I think this is one of the advanced uh, level things about this 1331 shape. It enhances your manipulation ability on your defense uh, because you have the right personnel in the right channels. And what I mean by this is you can do out to in rush defense where you press on the outside and you try to force them back in without having to set out roles and say, uh, number 13, you're the quickest, you need to rush up all the time. If you are, if you are set in one three three one shape, naturally your outside defenders will be the quicker defender. So you can naturally just push up and you'll force your, uh, your opponents to the inside. Then, because you are set up in the um, one three three one shape and you can attack the wider ruck, you can now go into a, uh, into a situation or a scenario where you can be softer on the inside with your press, your line speed, you can be softer and you can manipulate your opponents to play wide. So you can show them that space to go wide, you can allow them to play wide and then they'll set up the wide rock and that's where you can attack the rock. Um, we're going to get, uh, I'll get to it in, a, in just a second where, uh, remember we said the Lucy's is or the uh, the one three three one shape is one Lucy, then there's three tights, then there's two tights and a Lucy straight. So the one three three one shape is actually one three two plus one and one. Now that two plus one means there's two Lucy's on that side. So if you run this shape really well, then you can maneuver the side of the two Lucy's. You can, for instance, make sure that your specialist poaching guy is on the side of the two Lucy's. Because you'll be covered, you'll have balance, and he'll be able to work into the spaces. He can bounce from the rocks, he can leave the first rock, the second rock, the third rock, and he can go and wait for the fourth rock in the wider channel to bounce. Okay. And then the next thing is, I'm just going to leave that on the screen uh, for a second. Uh, the next thing I want to quickly chat to you about is um, the balance. Now, what does balance give us in defensive setup? It enhances the situational adaptability of your defensive system. Because remember, um, for every action, there's a reaction. It works like that on the rugby field as well. So um, when the attack, uh, when attack does something, there's an action. Now defense needs to react to that action. And because the defense is reacting, there's change somewhere. So if, uh, you know, if, if one of my defenders is tackling in, somebody needs to fill up that space, but he needs to come from somewhere. So he's leaving space somewhere else. And that's what the attack looks like. Nas is an attacking guru. That is, um, uh, that's what attack gurus are, do, you know, that's what they do for a living. They're looking for mismatches. They're looking for space and they're looking for mismatches. And space and mismatches is a result of change that happens on the defensive side. So uh, the attack also tries to manipulate the defense. Now, when I talk about the balance that uh, is brought by the 1331 system, I'm specifically referring to you'll be able to adapt on defense without losing your balance. And I'm going to show you in a video clip uh, that as well. Okay. Um, so just Quickly, how are we going to put it together? Uh, I'm going to stop the share now so it's fine with you. You can see me. There we go. I think I've stopped sharing. Okay. 
So, a couple of ground rules uh, for the 1331. Your defense principles in your system will stay the same. You can, you can build on it, you can change it, but there's a couple of things that, you know, it's inevitable that you're going to do it like that. So, the first thing is, um, the first question that always arises from the 1331 shape is, how quickly can guys get into shape? Now, I, for me, in all my research that I've done and, and, and um, in all the matches that I've played the 1331 shape, it should be anything from first phase all the way to third phase. It should not take you, your players, more than three phases to get into the shape. And I'll show you again in a video clip from the Chiefs Islanders game where Troy was scored in two phases or three if you like, but they could have been in shape if they were running this um, the system. So your players need to be in shape within two to three phases. Then the next thing is the tights need to work to the middle. Uh, tights is often the culprits. Uh, they end up in the wide channels because they ran to the wide channels. So tights need to work to the middle. Tights, everybody needs to work in units. So the tights need to, you know, kind of protect each other, help each other, because the space between them needs to be smaller because they're not, naturally, they're not that far, so they don't cover um, that much space. Um, then obviously the spacing in the middle is tight. The spacing out wider uh, is bigger. Your center split. Uh, and I always get the question, how do you get your centers to split? What's the right moment? How, how, do, you, how do you do it now? Often the 12th center is in the heat up. Uh, in the first tackle, let's say it's a line out and they bring the ball up hard, then the wider channels. Usually your 12th is in the tackle, right? And sometimes it's the third team. So one of the easy things for this is the guy who's on his feet fold same side. And I know most of you already runs it like that. Uh, that's why I say the principles from all is the same. The center that's on his feet just falls to the same side and the center that's on the ground, he goes out to the reverse side because the ball is moving away from that in any case. Then your loose forwards works as a unit. So they work in a unit of one and two. And this is where it gets interesting. And again, this is where I want to refer to the manipulation ability of your defensive system. If your loosies grasps their flexibility in the system, then you can do a lot of damage. So when I install this system, when I work with players, I sit with all the loosies that we have for the season and we go through clips and I explain this to them to ensure that they know exactly how the system works. Because their rules aren't so set. They can be on either side, they can be two on the left, then one on the right, or two on the right, one on the left. But it basically works like this, your open side flanker from a scrum, your open side flanker and the eight will go to where the ball is going, and your blind side flanker will obviously stay, right? And there's a reason for that, just it's to get into shape, but there's another very important reason, we'll get to that later. Um, then from a line out, obviously it's determined by who's involved in what. But you want to be sending two Lucy's to the one side, and one Lucy needs to stay. So the side that the Lucy is staying is always one. Going towards the other side, there needs to be two Lucy's, and it's always your eight on your open side. Um, now again, I just want to go back to the manipulation ability. We, uh, I spoke about it earlier. The, if, you, if you think about it, um, somebody in the week asked me, how do you bring your poacher, you know, if you have a specialist poacher in your system, someone like Heinrich Brousseau from back in the day, um, how, how, do you, how do you empower him in the 1-3-3-1 system? Okay, so um, for me, this is the perfect system for a poacher. Because now he's, uh, he's not just going to run around the field and look for opportunity to poach. We're going to sit beforehand and say, listen, this is how it's going to work. If they have a line out of here, we are going to manipulate them to play into a certain area. And we're going to almost serve them on a plate to you. And that's where you're going to poach. So to the side that you send the two Lucy's, you can, for instance, have your poacher make sure that he's the Lucy that goes to that side, but he's not the Lucy that's all the way on the outside between the tight and the back. He's the Lucy that roams, if you want to call it that, up over there on that side. So he's ready for that wide rock for you to attack the wide rock. Okay, then um, your nine. Nine, <laughs> Fuff, uh, in, the, you know, in the World Cup with the Springboks, Fuff has redefined the entire defensive role of nines. And I enjoy it. So I call it fuffing. So fuff has redefined the whole role of a nine. And you'll, you'll see, if you, if you have a look at how the box defended, you know, the rugby World Cup final against England where they ran this 1-3-3-1 system. Fuff was never pinned to a specific role. He did a lot of things. And it's because the 1-3-3-1 system, uh, 
looses him up. It kind of takes off the leash of the dog and he can roam. He can decide when he applies pressure, he can read the game. Yes, there are times where you would have seen him in the line. Um, the nine's role is to plug holes. Uh, the nine's role is to go wherever he is near it. So he can go forward, plug hole. He can go back, plug hole. He can stay blind to chase everybody to the inside. He can apply pressure on the kicker. And that's one of the nice things about um, this system. I know Ireland, when they run this system, they have O'Connor in the backfield because O'Connor is a good reader of the game and he's also one of their good kickers. So you'll, for instance, see when Ireland runs it, they'll have O'Connor all the way in the backfield. That's how they prefer it. Rian, as, uh, as Faf de Klerk, while we wait for another one or two guys to join, as a guy like Faf de Klerk, has, has he redefined the role of a nine in terms of defense in world rugby? Yeah, I, th I think so. Um, maybe not like a, a full-on, you know, I don't think he's re reinvented the wheel, but he's definitely uh, opened up the eyes of defensive coaches. I'll tell you why. If you look a couple of, you know, just a couple of years back, maybe three, maybe four years back, you would have seen the nines do what they, they do. They hang behind the rock, you know, they shadow the ball, they plug a hole in the front, they plug a hole in the back. Mm. But now, you, ever since uh, Fuff started doing something new, and, and basically what he did is he started applying pressure on the nine from a rock, not from first phase, from, you know, in phase play. And it's those timing runs. And then you'll see him pop up from between the centers, and he'll come at an angle to the first receiver. And it, it's something that we didn't necessarily see the nines do. And then you've got to ask yourself the question, but uh, how can he be doing it? And for me, that means he's, uh, he's been, I don't know, a better way of saying it. They've taken off his leash. You know, they've said, look, you don't necessarily have to be here. You can go where you want to go. When I installed this 1331 system, I had to work with my nines as well. I had to explain to them um, some of the nines here at the free state. We spoke about it, and I explained to them. I said, listen, you're not going to be set anymore where you go. Yes, you're still going to have that basic job. You're going to roam. You're going to be behind the rock. You're going to drive the system, pull the guys into space. But you can now time it and, you know, shoot out of the line. And you won't break the line because we'll know when you shoot up, we don't count you as part of the line. We can send you out as a little rabbit. You can go and cause some havoc there and then the line will come and we'll come and sweep up whatever you give us. Do you... Do you, before you continue with your presentation, do you need a certain type of player in, in terms of your 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 your, your scrum off uh, to, to to perform this role that you saw you're talking about? Like a, you know, if you if we're taking Faf de Klerk, he's a very specific type of player. He's very physical for a scrum off. Not all schoolboy scrum offs are, are physical. They normally the the thin smaller type of guys. Can these guys also perform the same job according to you, or or, or you know, do you have to look at your your strengths and weaknesses in terms of your scrum off can, can give you on the field? Look, what makes this 1331 system uh, so exciting for me and why I think it's the way forward is any nine can fit into the system because the nine's role, the nine's role is now flexible. You can, you can give him a role in this or he can go anywhere. A good nine will now realize he can do his regular defensive things, but he is free to shoot up out of the line, to pressure their scrum off. Because, I mean, back two, three years ago, the nines, or it's maybe a little bit more, but the nine would never pressure the other nine behind the rock, let's say five or six or seven phases in. Hmm. He won't pressure that nine. He will be either in the line or he will be, um, you know, he will be shadowing the chip line or plugging hole. He won't go for that nine, but now he can, he can do it. Okay, so to answer your question, will any type of nine fit in? Yes, definitely. I know you have your running nines and your nippy nines, and then you have your nines who's good game readers and they're good service players. They don't do, they don't snipe as much. But because this is a flexible system, um, any nine can fit, you know, fit this role. I actually this afternoon I'm helping a, a team in what's it, Europe? No, in Russia. I'm helping a team there with a defense, uh, some consultation work, and I, I watched them play this afternoon. They played their first match, and we ran this system. And they have two nines that differ day and night. And when they made the swap and the other nine came on, you didn't even notice it. Because the system, you know, it's a, it's a flexible system and there's balance all the way. Wonderful. 
Okay, you can continue, guys. Just remember, uh, in the chat box on the right, you'll see a raise hand, raise your hand, or, or type a question. If you've got a question for Rian, uh, any questions we can direct directly to him as well. But Rian, yeah, thanks. You can continue. All right, guys. I I'm, I'm, I'm almost done. There's one thing we're going to discuss and then we're going to look at two video clips and yeah, I'd really like you to ask some questions because that's, that's how you learn in this system. That's how I learned it. It's a trial and error type thing. Um, so the last thing I want to uh, just quickly discuss in terms of how, how you put one, three, three, one shape together, you know, some of the ground rules is in this shape, it allows you to have system drivers. That's what I call them, uh, system drivers. Other guys call them uh, defensive captains and so on. So for me, it's system drivers. And the system drivers has set roles in terms of management. So they have uh, uh, managerial set roles. And a good example of it is your reverse side losing. So let's say there's a scrum first face, our open side flanker and the eighth man, they go to that side. Now the blind side, Lucy stays. Let's say it's the seventh flank. He stays. He is then a system driver. For me, he's a system driver. Again, you'll figure out where you want your drivers to be, but I'll show you why I want him to be a system driver. He's a system driver in the sense that it is his job to get the tights out of that scrum and into the middle field. So if there's, if there's a line break or if there's something in the middle field where the tights should have been, then as a defense coach, before I go to the tights, I go to the system driver and say, but you didn't manage your players because you were supposed to chase them out because we know the tights, if the scrum falls, sometimes it takes long for them to get up. Same with line -out, same with drive, same with everything. If you have a system driver whose focus is not to now, you know, corner flag and run like hell to go and fill a, fill a hole on the other side. His focus is to get everybody up and get everybody into line. You'll find that your defense sets quicker, and that's what we want. Um, uh, if we can set before the attack sets, then we have a better chance of winning the situation. So system drivers um, is something that you can bring into the 1331 shape. It might be in the shape that you defend in any case, but the 1331 shape has specific areas where system driver is, uh, you know, just, just makes a massive, massive difference. And I'm going to show you now when we go into the um, clip. So Rian, I'm going to show you the street clip. Yes. Uh, I've got a question here from Warren. Warren is asking, who is setting your defensive line speed? Is it your Lucy standing three from Ruck or 12, 13 standing outside him? You understand the question? No, it's, uh, for me, it's uh, yes, yes, I understand the question. For me, it's the C defender. Uh, uh, you know, we traditionally we talk about A, where there's a rap, you got A defender, B defender, C defender. A is set to, you know, chase the, uh, uh, you know, stop the nine. B is there for the running nine. And C usually sets across first receiver. So for me, in my books, C sets our uh, defensive line, our line speed. Um, uh, everybody outside of him adjusts according to him. Obviously, A and B has to first do their job, and their job is the nine. So, do I, I hope that answers your question. For me, C defender, whoever that might be, he's the one that determines the line speed. Cool, he said 100%. <laughs> yeah, nice. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna look at two clips, actually three clips. Um, the last one is homework. I'm gonna tell you where you can find it. You can do it yourself. Um, but we're gonna look at two clips, and I, in the two clips, I just want to show you the value of the one three three one system, and I want to show you how much easier the one three three one system would have made the situation out. The clips I know over these webinars and the Zoom things, the clips never run. It's you know it's hacker. But um, don't worry about it because I'm going to uh, freeze frame it in any case and we're going to uh, just quickly discuss the situation. All right, so let me just find the first one. Here goes nothing. Okay, and then share. Okay, Nos, can you see this? 
Yes. Unmute myself. Yes. No, Rihanna, you see can, the clip? Yeah, I can see okay, it. Okay, good. You can continue. All right. So here we go. Uh, this is from the Varsity Cup. Uh, this is uh, the uh, Varsity Cup this year. This is Shimless against Pirka. Um, I'm going to play the clip now. I just want you to, uh, one thing that you need to see is, uh, have a look. The, this guy over here, I'm sure you can see a mouse, but this guy over here is actually the pick right wing. He takes the ball up. Um, just keep that in mind. All right. All right, so I'm going to pause it here. And let's have a quick chat. Now, there's two things I want to talk about um, in this specific clip. The first one is um, it's more a defensive thing in general. It might not have so, so much to do with the one three three one shape, but the first one is something I wrote a blog article about uh, I think three or four weeks ago. You and there was a lot of reaction to that. It's um, intuition versus system game, okay. and. I see this, I don't know if it's just me, but I see this a lot nowadays happening in rugby matches. Just in the next clip from the Chiefs Islanders, you're going to see the exact same thing. Players running away from a situation to go into a formation. All right, so let's have a look here. The 13 over here runs away from this situation because remember we said the centers needs to be split. So you see the 12 is over here. He was sort of part of the tackle, but one was actually the tackler. So 13 looks, he's inside. He sees the 12, and he realizes, heck, I'm out of, one of us is out of formation. We shouldn't be here. So maybe because 12 was slugs into the rock, 13 decides to drop, and he leaves. So he's honoring the system, and he's not playing the situation. Now, that's, of, I mean, that's a defensive error, uh, because even if you're out of shape, you need to play the situation. All right. So um, what then happens is he leaves a massive hole on this side. So you'll see when we play the club, because 13 has left, uh, the pick was actually the other team in purple. They, act, they were going to play to the right-hand side. But this is a slow ruck, so there's enough time for them to see, wait, hang on, there's a defender that just dropped. So the wing of the pick is here at the bottom left, 11, he's just out of picture. He calls the ball, the pick plays into the space, and they score. All right, so this is a, a, I don't know, you can call it what you want. For me, it's a defensive error, and it's because the player didn't look at the situation. All right, so now it brings me to the next thing. In a 1-3-3-1 uh, system, you have balance, right? Uh, and uh, balance gives you adaptability. Now, if we, if we have a look here, you'll, if we look on the Shimla side, which is the guys, the, the numbers in yellow, there is the 11 on the left-hand side. So there's the 13. He's, he's leaving most probably because he's feeling there are forwards on the other side that, ex, that is exposed because both centers are here and they should be split. Okay, so there's the 9, there's the 12, 1 was actually um, the tackler, he's on the ground, there's our 7, and there's the 5. Okay, so now, because uh, Shimla's defended in one three three one system here, and I know because I was the defense coach, so it's tough for me to discuss this clip, but because we defended in the one three three one system here, we are actually set up perfectly to defend if the ball goes to the open side, and I'll show you why. If you have a look at the pick now, Here's the 9, there's the 12, there's the 15, there's the 13. Remember I told you to remember, uh, to have a look, the 14 actually took the ball up. And the 11 is out of picture over here. So the only backline player that's left is the 10. And he had a massive game that night. He's just out of picture here. But on his outside, there's only forwards. Right, so there's no real threat in terms of speed and getting burned on the outside and fancy moves, etc. They were most probably, if they were going to play to the right, Forge was going to heat up the ball. And for the Shimlas on the other side, I don't have the wide angle of this, but they were perfectly in shape. So that means the defense was actually set up better here than the attack. The defense had a better, better chance of stopping the attack. Okay. And what I want to point out here is the balance of the 1-3-3-1 system. It, for me, it's such a good system that even if a player is out of formation, even if he finds himself in the wrong 
uh, area of the field, like this center, because I mean the two centers should not be together yet, because this is the third phase from the set piece, so by now they should have been split. But because the system helps you to adapt and keep your balance, even if the center is out of place, there's still balance on the other side. And that for me is why this is such an effective system. Because remember, a defensive system is a platform to enhance a player's uh, decision-making abilities. It's the same as your um, attack shapes. The reason you run in shape is to help the player make better decisions because a certain shape will bring forth a certain bunch of opportunities. So on, the, on defense, it's exactly the same for me. We don't necessarily, uh, I don't necessarily want the players to just stick to the formation. The formation is there to give him a platform with a bunch of different options. And then from there, he can make the decision. So here, he honored the system and he didn't make his own decision. So, okay, defensive error uh, on our side. But again, the balance on the other side was fine because uh, the pick, the entire back line is on this side. And the Shimlas, most of their backs is on this side. But if the pick went to the right chair, Shimlas would have to stop them because there was balance and there was no real threat from the attack. So I'm just going to play the clip uh, and then you'll see. So you'll see the center leave down the other side, the pick playing to the space. Trouble in paradise, try. Right, so I'm going to stop this one. The next clip I'm going to show you is um, from the Chiefs Islanders game from last weekend. And what actually caught my eye is it was a very good try. But two, three days afterwards, uh, I saw this on social media and they blew it up as it, it was an amazing try. And for me, like I said earlier, defense is my passion. When I had a look at it, especially when I saw the replay and the angle from the back, uh, instantly for me, I thought, oh, if only they were in a different shape, then this would have been a very, very easy situation to manage defensively. Um, so I'm just going to screen share. Okay, Nos, uh, can you see? Yeah, no, it's perfect. I can see. You can okay, see. good. All right, so here we go. Um, so this was a scrum uh, in the Chiefs half. The, the Chiefs do very, very well to manipulate the defense here. They take the ball as wide as possible, all the way into the five. I'm just going to pause it here. Okay. So remember I spoke about this just now in the pit clip. Again, there's the 10. This is m seconds before the ball comes out, and he leaves. He leaves the situation. Now, for some other reason, he leaves. I don't know why. I don't know if it's because of the orders, uh, you know, the coach is given, or uh, is it a back running away from a tackle? I don't know. But they're leaving, and, and this, this for me is concerning, right? So, in any case, the 10 was not part of any tackle here. He wasn't part, you know, he, he wasn't, he's not part of the ruck or nothing. He leaves, right? So let's just go on. Okay, so you'll see in the back, trying to cross, trying to get into position. Right, so now this is where the problem is. Ten is now going to cross, but he arrives late. And because he arrives late, there's no connection. I always say there's no Wi-Fi, because that's what the youth nowadays does when they walk into a restaurant or anything. They're just looking for the Wi-Fi. So defense is the same. The minute you get into a line, you need to connect. Okay, so 10 is not connected. So I'm just going to show you with my, with my pointer, uh, I'm just going to say that, with my uh, mouse thingy. 10 is over here. He's late because he's beaten by the ball. Okay, so the attack is already running onto the ball and 10 is not on the line. So the problem here is all the way outside, that's a wing, uh, or that's a 13 if I'm correct, but, but it's outside back. Now there's absolutely no connection between him and 10. And then on the inside of 10, these three players over here, that's the entire front row. So that's number one, number two, number three. And look at where they're defending and look at the space they need to cover. And I mean, if, if we could see the, the numbers on the back of the Chiefs, that's nightmare type situations for front rowers and understandably so, right. Um, and now in the next freeze frame, I'm going to show you where the 1331 would have actually made a massive uh, difference here. Okay, 
So now we have a situation where our, our one, our two, and our three is exposed in the outside channels. They do not have the speed to defend with the backs. And remember when, when we looked at that, um, those three little arrows, the makeup of a front rower is completely different than the makeup of a backline player. So the backline player should naturally be quicker than a front ranker. And that means that the backline player can cover more space. He can go sideways. He can go up quicker in terms of defense. So now we have our front rowers here. Uh, and they have to defend, you know. They, because they're too slow, they cannot connect to the backs. And now you have a situation where your outside defenders is too quick for your inside defenders. So your catch-up defenders is nowhere. And they know your threat. Okay. So what, what does the Chiefs do? The Chiefs... They, there's no magic here. They just play the ball. They just play the situation. Um, and they go through on the side. And I'm just going to play the clip here so that we can get to the angle uh, from the back. Okay. Now you'll see this angle from the back. And that's why I'm going to talk about system drivers. All right. So here's our problem. Uh, if you have a look at two and three... They're too slow to defend with the backs. They're too slow to defend in these channels. They are going sideways. And, and uh, you know, two seconds before this freeze frame, they were already going sideways. Now, they, they're going sideways, and the backs is going up. So you have a situation in your defensive line where we're defending in different directions. That's the first thing. And because they're just shadowing sideways, you'll see that number three is beaten on the outside here very easily. Nothing magic, um, it's just a regular running line. And because he's beaten, the backs on the outside need to make that decision that there's somebody coming and nobody's, uh, nobody's on my inside uh, that's going to stop him. So 10 sort of steps in, which leaves 13 in no man's land. So uh, I don't want to point out specifics, but it comes down to, you know, the tights cannot connect to the backs on the inside because the backs is too quick. And now the tights is not going up. The backs want to go up and there's a complete disconnection. And now what happens is the Chiefs just play the situation and there's another guy all around the outside. He actually scores a try. So if we were in one three three one uh, setup here, first things first, this, where this number three is, would have been a loose forward in my books, okay? And then number two would have been number three. Now, if this was a loose forward over here, because the Lucy is more mobile, he's got a bit more speed, he can cover more ground, he can actually connect with backs on defense. He would have put in much more pressure on this Chiefs ball carrier, the Lucy would have actually gone up off the line. Remember, these front rows have just gone sideways. The Lucy would have actually gone up off the line. Okay, so that's the one thing. If there was Lucy, the blindside flanker would have tracked from the scrum up there. He would have tracked straight on this side of the field. He would have been in position. He would have also been the system driver. So he would have been the guy who chased these uh, front rankers up from the scrum and work them to the inside and then we would have had balance on the outside. Now if that was the case for me in my book certainly, if there was Lucy over here, then this situation would have been a regular four attackers versus three defender scenario. The Islanders would have gone up. If the Chiefs had gotten the ball all the way to the guy on the outside, then the 15 over here would have just closed the door like uh, he regularly does, and they would have tackled the Chiefs out, maybe somewhere on the 22, or it would have been a wide rock. But I think if there was a 1 3 3 1 setup over here with a Lucy on this side, I think that uh, Islanders would have much easily defended this situation. Because remember, I spoke earlier about uh, attack looks for um, mismatches in the defense, and a mismatch comes from change in the defense. So the attack does one thing. And we have to react to that. And our reaction causes change somewhere. So what did they take here? They moved the ball all the way across the field. And they knew that the defense system is going to go to that side. And then they played back all the way because they opened up the space. And they did open up the space. But if you were in a 1-3-3-1 uh, formation and you had a Lucy on that side, your transition defender, you would have managed that space even if there's ample space because you would have had the speed to do so. So I'm just going to hit this play and you'll see um, they 
the two backs are no man's land. That's why 13 is going in. The 15 goes up to slam the door, but there's no way of stopping him. And that's more or less it. All right, and then um, I'm just going to stop the screen share. Um, no, so I don't know if I've stopped the screen share. I think I have. Okay, so uh, just uh, the last clip, um, I'm not going to show you. It's actually your homework. <laughs> if you want to see the 1331 system in full swing and work really nicely, then if you have time, go and watch the entire Rugby World Cup, the 2019 one, and watch all the Springbok games. And if you don't have time for all the games, then go and watch the final. Because what happened is the box, I mean, like I mentioned, uh, Jock Nino planted the seed with me earlier um, when they did the camp here. Yeah. And the box defended like this in the Rugby World Cup. And they got better at it and better at it until they went into the final. And if you go and have a look at the final, it completely suffocated the English attack. The, the box were impenetrable, not because it's South Africa and it's the final and Rugby World Cup and all those things. If you take all the emotion out of it, just go look at the defense. England could not get through the box. Yes, we were physical, but go and have a look at the, um, I call it the, the, the thicker channels and the quicker channels. The thicker channels where the heavy traffic was in, we had our heavy defenders. That's where the big lads were. They were making beasts, and those guys were making big hits over there. And then in the quicker channels, that's where you cut your arm, and those boys were out, the Islander, and you would see Kulisi there, you'd see uh, Peter Steff there, and you'll see Dwayne from Yellen pop up wherever there's, there's opportunity. So the box managed the 1331 system brilliantly in the final, and England could not get through in the thick channels, they could not get through in the quick channels. And then on top of that, because the, the box managed it so well, Faf was a, he was a menace. That's what you call him. He was a menace um, uh, in that system because he popped up everywhere and anywhere. And he caused so much trouble for the English attack because he didn't have his leash on. And the balance in the system allowed him to do that. So yeah, in short, no, that's what is it. Um, it's really just a framework. You need to work it out yourself. But hopefully this is giving you more or less, a, I don't know, a blueprint for the 1331 system. I certainly think it's the way forward. And I know for a fact it makes it difficult for defense. Like I say, I watched the match this afternoon. Um, there's a lot of pro players there, but it's up, it's up and coming country. And I've helped them with the system. We've installed it. Uh, they're running it. And I watched them this afternoon play it. And it completely suffocated their opponents. The opponents, you know, every third, fourth phase, they couldn't get through and they ended up kicking the ball. Rian, um, a question from my side. Uh, from a scrum, it's easy uh, in terms of if, the way I understand it and the little bit of involvement that I've had in... Uh, we've got, we've got about, about 10 minutes, guys, for questions. So let's work through this 10 minutes. Uh, so from a scrum, it's easy because your blindside flanker will be your, your defense driver, I think you call it, uh, on the blind side. He'll be driving those fatties to get into the midfield. My question to you is from a line out, we'll, we'll take on that role because normally one of, you know, at school level, all of your losers might be jumpers in the line out. Uh, at the back of the line out, maybe it's not necessarily that they're standing in front of the line. So who will be your, from a line out, driving that defensive uh, system? Okay, so that, that'll be determined by your line-out, your move, or whatever line-out you play. Because the, uh, the guys that's involved in the jumping pot will obviously be late. So from there, you'll determine who goes to what side. Now, just I, I want to be quick in answering so we can allow a lot of questions. But um, for me, the rocket science of rugby is the defensive part. Anybody can run with the ball. Defending becomes a little, a little bit tricky. So... Uh, you should spend a lot of time, especially with your Lucy's, so that they know if we walk into this lineup, this is the call. Instantly, you should know, I'm staying, I'm chasing them. The two of us, we're going to head to the far side and we're going to see if we can get the turnover. Yes. Um, guys, if there's any questions, please raise your hand. I'll unmute you. You can just, uh, ask the question directly to Rian. Uh, Rian, lots of teams use the nine in the trams. Uh, uh, defensive wise uh, so the nine will be in the tramps and they'll have a more mobile or quicker hooker maybe or a lucia as a rabbit defender and and lots of the nines 
take charge of defending the blind, especially for at least two, three phases. Is that something that you, you recommend as well? And then my second part of the question is, if, if, is that's the, if that's the role that the nine takes on, do you then lose his ability to be that little uh, Jack Russell that can come in at rucks because he's, he's actually staying stuck on the blind, having to man up uh, when, if there's a reverse play coming back to the blind? Yeah, look, look, the nines, the reason why we leave the nine on the blind side is if they come back quickly, is to have speed there. So now because of the flexibility of the system, you can make your nine the system driver at the line now. So you can say to the nine for the first two phases, I need you to stick blind side to chase everybody in until we set up and then you can go into your role, until the wing has time to actually come and hop into that position. Now, I don't want to give away all, all of my tricks. Everybody has their own tricks. But I, for instance, um, in terms of this system, I have my 10 at a set piece line out. It's only in my own 22 that my 10 defends in his channel, not because he's a poor defender. When we're up on the field and we know there's a possibility of a kick, I have the blind wing defending in the 10 spot. I have the 10 dropped already because I don't want to waste uh, time for the 10 to drop and the wing to go to the front. I, you know, the 10 can start at the back, the wing hardly gets any action, he can defend there. The wing's lower. So I, if we, for instance, in your 22, you'll find with my teams that the wing will be defending at 10, and my 10 is already in the back, because if you don't kick out the ball, then we're going to run you, because both my decision makers and my, my uh, guys that runs my attacking systems is already in the back, and they can see the full picture. Hmm. I think that's a brilliant idea. Um, it's just thinking outside the box. I think we get so stuck in... in in a way, things have been done over the last 50, 100 years in terms of rugby. The 10 is a, they shoot the defender 10. So thinking differently, you know, you've seen teams using 10s actually in the tramps. Bernard Foley for Australia, they were putting him in the tramps uh, of the line out, not to hide him, but obviously your number 10 is your playmaker. You don't want him involved in, in, in physical, physical confrontations 15 times in a, in a game or getting stuck in a ruck. Look, I mean, if you take a guy like Andre Pollard, when Pollard, when Pollard is in the line, he tackles because he loves the physicality. That's why he's had some operations on his shoulders. So now if you, if you play an opponent that's quick, uh, that has quick hands, that sends it wide, your 10 is 9 out of 10 times. He's part of the heat up from the line out. And you know how it is. You're a tag guru Nas. If you have the, your big running eighth man there in the back, you say to him, pick the 10, run straight towards the 10. So they target the 10. So for me, it just makes sense to put the 10 in the back and then he's ready. Utavio has got a question. Rian, he's, he's asking, do you think a specific defensive style, drift or blitz defense, fit better on the 1-3-3-1 defensive shape? Or well, just depends by the attack and the skills of your defense. Otavio, let me let me plant a seed with you. Um, when you defend, you know, back in the days when I was a little youngster, our coach always said from the inside out, and we would use the touchline as a defender, and that's good. And then um, modern day rugby came, and we started doing out to in rush defense. But let me just show you something, and I can show you here in this picture. Um, I'm all about, I love collisions and, you know, manipulating the collision. But a ball carrier has a natural drift. So if the ball is coming from there, it's only when I come really hard, like Dimitri Katrikidis came in this King's Cheetos game, where you come running rah, towards the rock and you're coming straight, and then you're going to get hammered. 99% of the time, a ball carrier has a little bit of a drift. And that's one thing. And the other thing is, remember, he's got to watch the ball. So you don't have to line up five meters on his outside to make him come in. The minute you line up on his outside shoulder, just 30 centimeters wider, if he looks to the ball, he loses you from his vision. And then you can start pressing them to the inside. So one of the principles um, in my systems, but again, it's coach specific, everybody has own things. For me, my defenders lines up on the outside shoulder. And the reason for that is the minute the ball carrier looks at the ball, they lose sight of him. And then he presses. 
So when he catches the ball and he looks up, the defender is there. And now I have a bunch of clips. If you can connect with me, I know we've already had some discussions. I have a bunch of clips on how many times I've had turnovers because the ball carrier is being hit from a side that he doesn't see the, the defender coming. And he gets deep backwards, we get the positive heat, and instantly we steal. So, to answer your question, I think in your 1 3 3 1 um, uh, system, there's so much flexibility that you can decide listen, if it's a strong point, if I have the defenders that can come out of the line, I'm going to do that. If it's not a strong point and I'm very strong on the inside, then I'm going to push one guy to get him to make a cutback, and then we'll kill them there. Okay, gents, one last question. If there's anyone left uh, that needs, wants to ask a question, we've got about two and a half minutes left. Otherwise, um, what I'll also do is after uh, I've processed this video, I will uh, post it on uh, YouTube and I'll send the link. I'll email everyone the yeah. link. You can have a, have a watch. If there's something that you maybe didn't understand, get in touch with me. I'll forward you Rian's email address as well. Get in touch with Rian. I know he's open for sharing if there's more something more specific that you didn't get time to ask, Rian can maybe just get back to you and uh, we can uh, we can have a like a chat about that. Uh, Warren says very clear, Rian, this is exactly what Saders did against the Bulls last year. Scott explained this to me beforehand, and it's yeah. exactly what Burger Wendell knocked on so often in that game. So what do you say? Thank yeah, you, it's exactly God. exactly like that. Okay, Ach, Rian, I just want to thank you uh, uh, for your time. And your insight, thanks for sharing uh, uh, wonderful ideas and wonderful, yeah, to get in touch with you. Good luck with your, with your career there in Bloemfontein. Uh, I hope everything works out well for you. Yeah, like I said, guys, I'll share this link. I'll share the link on email to everyone and you can have a look again in detail and get in touch with Rion as well in terms of defense. Uh, one of the up-and-coming South African coaches in uh, IRB Level 3 qualified so really a guy that you can you can tap into his knowledge. Very passionate about the game. We've learned it. We've gotten to know each other uh, over the last couple of years very well. So I know he's very passionate and he's a student of the game. So get in touch and share your ideas with him as well. Thanks, Rian. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Nas. Thanks for everybody listening in. It's... Um... It's, it's uh, for me collaborating with coaches. I always attend webinars to listen to the questions that they ask because most of the time you have more or less an idea what they talk about. But when the question starts coming, you realize, wait, hang on, I haven't thought about it like this guy. So, y'all, yeah, please connect with me. I do defense consultation work. I'm actually not signed anywhere. So, chat to me and I'll share whatever I can and assist. Cheers, guys. Rap rapid greetings. Keep safe. We'll chat again. Ciao. Thanks, Noss.